Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome everybody back to another video. Starting the week off with a collection update. Yes, this is a much more positive video than the previous one, um, which of course was my thoughts on the recent Corey Feldman documentary. But we're, we are all done with that. We are not going to... Uh, dwell on that any further um, i'm sure people will have questions in a live stream but that's okay um but in terms of videos and such um i will not be discussing that again because that was very very troublesome but anyway uh again more positive stuff here collection update um i do have a bunch of stuff here now some of this is is bought and the rest of it which i will get to last uh, was actually stuff that I guess I inherited. I guess that's the appropriate term, um, but I'll get more into that at the end. Um, but first up, uh, get out of here, Furious 7. I'm, I'm trading you in. I'm not... Fuck off. <laughs> you don't belong here. We don't like your kind here, Furious 7. You awful movie. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm just goofing around. But this is the stuff that... I did purchase uh, through the week. Not much. Um, this week was nonstop work. Um, I just got home a little while ago. And yeah, so I didn't really have a lot of time to go out and, and get stuff and all that. This was all actually, apart from the two records that I bought, all this came in the mail. Um, so yeah, so let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, first up, I did get a couple of VHS here. Um, this one. Um, I ordered off of e well, all the VHS came from eBay, but this is a screener copy of Metro with Eddie Murphy. Got this off of eBay really, really cheap. It was like five bucks with shipping. Um, I do have the regular VHS of this, um, but I did also want to grab a screener copy. I do like picking these up, and it, especially for Eddie Murphy's most underrated movie, at least in my opinion. Um, yes, you know, this, this review is up for those that want to go back and check it out. Um, but I was just looking around on eBay um, after, excuse me, I had watched this movie and found a really, really cheap copy. Again, about five bucks uh, with shipping to get a screener copy. So I'm like, okay, that's, that's awesome. Uh, for again, one of my favorite Eddie Murphy movies and his most underrated in my opinion. And the other two VHS that I got, these were uh, blank tapes that I bought um, from the same guy. I bought some uh, blank stuff from him before. And first up, this one is uh, Fox Kids 1993. And this has episodes of X-Men and Power Rangers. Um, has commercials and all that. So um, I don't know. Which episodes, how many episodes, if there's anything else on here, I don't know. Um, I have not watched uh, either of these tapes yet, um, of course, so I will, uh, you know, check these out and, and see what is on here. So really looking forward to that, and I'm also looking forward to this one, which this one has um, MTV music videos and an episode of Headbangers Ball from 1994 with the commercials which is why i bought it um i i think the the guest for the headbangers ball episode is pantera uh so i have to go and see which particular episode um i was kind of looking it up last night but i already forgot so yeah but i'm again looking forward to checking out uh both of these tapes and i actually got uh ordered two more um, that have more episodes of Power Rangers and other Fox Kids stuff with the commercials. So that'll be coming uh, hopefully this week. And I can uh, check these out and see what's all on there. Commercials and, and all the other stuff. Um, and I did get one DVD. Uh, this is another one to finish up the G.I. Joe collection. And this is Valor vs. Venom, which is a CGI movie. Uh, which is based on the Valor vs. Venom toy line that G.I. Joe did uh, right around the time that this came out. I do remember watching this on Cartoon Network. Um, this was a uh, 
Cartoon Network premiere or original movie or what have you back in 04. And um, I, again, I do remember watching it and I really liked it. And I've been wanting to get it on DVD. Um, I was looking at a couple copies on eBay and they sold like that. And I said, fuck it. And I just went and bought a copy because apparently people like this one. Um, so yeah, so I do have now Valor versus Venom. I do have the other one that they did, which was Spy Troops. It's in there somewhere. Um, and that's it for the, uh, the GI Joe, like animated movies or CGI movies, whatever you want to call them, apart from the, the actual animated movie, which I do have on Blu-ray. Uh, the only other G.I. Joe DVDs I don't have is there was two, I think two, yeah, there, okay, so there was one um, that was included in the Sigma 6 series that has an episode from that show and that's never been released. Uh, that was a figure exclusive and the other, which is also a figure exclusive, is called Ninja Battles, but I think that was a little like animated episode that was done specifically for that. So those are the only two that I don't have. Again, I do have the majority of the G.I. Joe stuff on DVD and Blu-ray because um, I do have the movie, the original animated movie and um, Renegades was on Blu-ray, but I have the rest of it. And there are some features on here, um, just the making of and, and storyboards and that kind of stuff, typical stuff for this. Uh, but this was cool. Uh, again, I, I have not seen this in... Uh, 16 years now, uh, 2004 is the last time that I saw this, but I do remember really liking it. I'm looking forward to checking this out again. So very, very cool. You know, G.I. Joe, G.I. Joe. Um, so that's it. Uh, just one DVD this time around. And uh, the rest in terms of movies is all Blu-ray. Now, these all come again from Kino Lorber. Uh, they were still running their sale. So... Last week, I ended up putting another order in. Um, this time, I actually think I got more than I did the last update. But I got a lot of good stuff. So I just want to take a quick swig of this. Getting a little thirsty. All this talking. Um, so again, I actually, yeah, I did get more this time around. But, yeah, that's all of them stacked up. So, first up, we've got Cop with James Woods. I have never seen this movie. I've heard a lot of good things about this. I would always see it um, when I was in Colorado, when I lived, when I was stationed out there. Um, I would always see this in Entertain Mart, and I never picked it up for whatever reason. I do have this on VHS. I did pick it up on VHS a while ago, but I have not watched it. Again, I have heard um, a lot of good things about this movie. I've been wanting to see it for years, and again, it was on sale, so I figured, you know what? Fuck it. It's on sale, so I grabbed it. Um, there is a commentary with the director and writer, uh, James B. Harris, who also did uh, Boiling Point with Wesley Snipes, which is a more underrated Wesley Snipes movie, in my opinion. Uh, I'm looking at something else. Um, but yeah, and um, also uh, Leslie Ann Warren is in the movie. Raymond J. Barry, who was in Rapid Fire with Brandon Lee. And he was also in Sudden Death with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Um, Charles Dur uh, Durning, you know... Great actor who unfortunately has passed away um, is in it as well. But again, I am really looking forward to this movie. Again, I've heard a lot of good things, especially from Rambo Raft for Life. Uh, he has always mentioned this movie over the years. And again, always wanted to see it, just never have gotten around to it. But again, it was like 10 bucks on sale. I figured, hey, it's 10 bucks. If I don't like it, whatever. It's not that big of a deal. And next up, I got a set of movies. Um, I actually got both of the FX films. Um, I've seen, I think I've seen both of these um, long, long ago. Because I remember like Showtime would run these a lot. Um, and I think I've seen both of these. I'm not sure, but I think so. So first up, 
we've got the original FX. Very cool. Uh, this is actually directed by Robert Mandel, who would go on to do The Substitute, which I really like that movie. Um, but Brian Brown is a uh, special effects wizard, and he gets kind of set up, and Brian Dennehy is the cop that helps him out. Um, also, uh, Diane Venora, who was in The Substitute as well, same director. Cliff Young, who was also in The Substitute. Um, Jerry Orbach, who unfortunately passed away, and Tom Noonan are in this one, and there is an interview with the director on here, so it should be cool. Um, and uh, Bill Conti did the music from Rocky, so that should be a cool listen. But, yeah, very cool uh, FX. And then I got, of course, the sequel FX 2, which uh, Brian Brown and Brian Denny here are back in this one. Um and this one has uh, Rachel Tataka. Uh, I can never say her name right. Rachel Tiktaku. I, I cannot say her name. But she was in Total Recall. She was Melina. Um, she was also in Man on Fire with uh, Denzel. She's been in a ton of movies over the years. Um, but she's in this as well, which is cool. And um, wow, Lalo Schifrin did the music from Enter the Dragon. So very cool. At least the soundtracks on these movies will be good. Um, but very cool stuff. So that is FX2. And there is a making of on here. It's probably from back in the day. Um, but still cool. And I, again, I'm pretty sure I've seen both of these movies. It's just been many, many years. Um, but I am looking forward to going back and watching these movies again. So we'll see. And then next up, this one was super cheap. Um, which is why I grabbed it. But I've always liked this movie. And um, Kino Lorber re-released it. Uh, Mill Creek put it out. But it didn't have any features. This actually has some features. On, well, one feature. Um, it has a commentary. But still very cool. But it is uh, Terminal Velocity. Again, I've always liked this movie. Um, this has a skydiving theme. It came out around the same time as Drop Zone with Wesley Snipes. Um, I know a lot of people actually prefer this movie to Drop Zone, but I like both, actually. Um, but not only is uh, Charlie Sheen in this movie, but uh, Natasha Kinski, um, James Gandolfini is in this. He's one of the villains. Um, early role for him. Christopher McDonald's in the film. Um, but good stuff. Again, I have not seen this movie in many years as well, um, but I'm looking forward to seeing it uh hopefully soon i'll give it a watch but terminal velocity um this one this next one this is a little independent film um this is a movie that i had seen uh many many years ago this was a blockbuster find because for some reason they put this in the kids section but it is nowhere near a kid film um and it is called the search for one eye jimmy um it sounds like a kid's movie, but it's definitely not. Um, it is definitely hard R. There is plenty of language in this movie. But it has an absolutely phenomenal cast. Um, uh, you got Michael Badalucco, who was in The Professional and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, Steve Buscemi is in it. Uh, John Totoro and his brother Nick Totoro are both in it. Um, Sam Rockwell, when he was first starting out, Samuel Jackson's in the movie. Um, also, uh, Tony Sirico, of course, Paulie Walnuts from The Sopranos, um, is in it. So many, so many big names are in this movie, but, uh, yeah, Jennifer Beals from Flashdance as well. Um, Ray, uh, Boom Boom Mancini, the boxer's in it. Uh, Anna Mara, who, uh, Ben Stiller's mom, unfortunately, she passed away not too long ago. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people are in this movie that were, uh, either starting out or they were just starting to get big and it's a it's a zany quirky comedy um i think it takes it's in yeah it takes place in brooklyn um you know and just really really zany stuff this movie was only on vhs until 2012 when this movie was released on blu-ray been wanting to get this for a while again kino lorber 
it was on sale but this was again a blockbuster find which will tie into the some of the stuff that i have to show later um but yeah i was very surprised when i found out this was on blu-ray and i don't know why i kept putting it off but yeah but if you can if you can find this movie um grab it from kino lorber or amazon or whatever or if it's available on streaming or whatever uh give it a look it's a the cast is stacked it's definitely one of those uh 90s independent movies that have a great cast in it and it's a really goofy zany film but it is worth a look at least in my opinion so that is the search for one eye jimmy again it's been so long since i've seen that um i did i do have it on vhs actually i remember finding it um on vhs many years ago because it was i believe actually it did have a dvd release but it was really really hard to find it was like blink and it came out and then it was probably a low print number and then that was it but yeah so it was on dvd for a little bit but it was really really hard to find but again i do remember finding it on vhs many many years ago And the neighbors are trying to vacuum through the floor yet again. Gotta love it. So moving on, um, wrapping up here, or starting to wrap up here. Um, I did grab a couple of Burt Reynolds movies. Uh, Kino Lorber actually released uh, quite a number of Burt Reynolds movies on Blu-ray, which is very cool. So I grabbed, uh, well this time, I grabbed uh, four of them. Um, so first up, I got uh, White Lightning, which was one of Burt's first big movies. This was way before, a couple years before Smokey and the Bandit. Uh, this was a year before The Longest Yard. Um, he plays uh, Gator McCluskey in this. And then a couple years after that, we would get the sequel, Gator. So I did get both of these movies. Um, White Lightning, I remember seeing part of this um it was way way back in the day when um we had free like free movies on demand like when it first started back in the day um this was one of the movies i remember watching some of um but yeah so got that one and then the sequel gator so very cool and there is a on these there is a two-part featurette um it might even be an interview with burt reynolds i'm not sure but it's a two-part featurette about these movies, which is very cool. So looking forward to these. Again, these were all relatively cheap on sale. So, And then next up, this one came out not too long ago. Um, I think late last year it came out. Um, another one that I've never seen. I do have it on VHS. I grabbed it not too long ago to check it out. But it was on sale rel relatively cheap. So I got Stick which uh, Burt Reynolds actually directs this one. He also directed uh, Gator, right? Yeah, he directed... Yeah, he directed Gator as well. Um, but, yeah, again, this one came out not too long ago, actually. So, we'll see about Stick. And then the last Burt Reynolds one that I got, um, I have not... This was another one of those movies that was uh, free movies on demand way you know many years ago now um when it first started i used to watch a lot of movies on there um back in the day and this was one of them and it is actually malone um and this is another one that was not available on dvd for quite a while stick might have been i'm not sure about that um but uh, gator and white lightning they were on dvd but this one uh for a long time was not available on dvd i remember trying to find like the vhs of this because i actually really like this movie um but the vhs even was like expensive at one point um but obviously not anymore because it's on blu-ray which is cool but this is a pretty good thriller type movie where it's kind of a updated version of shane it's a it's a western so to speak but this has a really good cast in it. Um, Bert is in it. Uh, Lauren Hutton from Once Bitten plays his girlfriend. She's also in Gator as well. Uh, Cliff Robinson, Robertson from Uncle Ben from Spider-Man, the original Spider-Man. Uh, he's in it. He's the villain. 
Um, Cynthia Gibb from Death Warrant with Van Damme, she's in it as well. Um, so, good cast. And again, this is another one that I have not seen in a long time. So I'm looking forward to checking it out. So there we go. So that's it for the Burt Reynolds ones. And the last ones that I got, um, I did get uh, five because this is another guy that Kino Lorber has released a bunch of his movies. Uh, Charles Bronson movies. I went ahead and grabbed some, some more of his movies. Um, I think most of these came out relatively soon. Uh, yeah, 2019. Yeah, these all, most of these, yeah, I think all these but the last one. Some, like, sometimes they don't have a copyright on here. Like, they have a copyright for the movie, but they don't have a copyright of when the Blu-ray came out. Oh, well, but I think all these except the last one came out last year. So, and most, again, all of them but the last one are like pre-Death Wish. So these, this is the time when Charles Bronson went over to Europe to make a lot of movies that were really, really big over there, but they didn't really break out in America until after Death Wish. So first up, we've got Farewell Friend, which also has uh, Alain uh, De Leon, or De Leon, excuse me, Alan De Leon, who's a very famous French actor. I believe he's still alive, actually. Um... But he's, in, he's been in a ton of movies over the years. Um, this is also known as Honor Among Thieves. I think that's what it was retitled for America. Um, never never seen this one. Um, but, you know, we will uh, give it a look and see what happens. Again, uh, old school Charles Bronson before Death Wish. So I always look forward to seeing, you know, those. And then this one is Rider on the Rain which also has, um, okay, I thought his wife was in this one. She's not, or no, she is. Okay, I was right. Uh, Jill Ireland's also in this one. Um, it has both versions of the movie. It has the U.S. version and the international version, and there is some, some commentaries and stuff on here, so uh, should be pretty cool. So there's that one. Again, um, all all these except the last one I've never seen. So, but they were all like ten bucks on sale. And then I grabbed uh, Cold Sweat, which again has his wife uh, Jill Ireland. Sorry about the glare. And it's directed by Terrence Young, who did a bunch of the James Bond films. So very cool, um, very cool stuff. So there's that. This movie. Um, I have, I've heard of all of these, but this one has a pretty lengthy car chase in it. I, I have heard about that, so I'm looking forward to to that. I mean, this came out in 1970. You know, Bullet had come out a couple years before. Uh, French Connection came out the year after. So car chases were a big thing in the 70s. <laughs> um, next up, I got Someone Behind the Door, which also has uh, Anthony Perkins and Jill Ireland is in this one as well. Uh, you know, great cast, but yeah, again, never, never seen these, but they're, they were pretty cheap. And the last Charles Bronson one, the last Blu-ray as well. Um, this one I have seen, um, I did have this one on DVD, finally upgraded to the Blu-ray and it is the Indian runner. Now, Charles Bronson has a small part in this. This is actually Sean Penn's directorial debut, um, haven't seen this in a long time, but it, it's a good movie. Um, a little a little disturbing, a little dark, but it is actually a, a pretty good movie. And a stacked cast, not just Charles Bronson, um, but David Morse and Viggo Mortensen are the two leads. They play uh, brothers who are at odds with each other. Uh, Valeria Golino from Hot Shots is in it. Patricia Arquette's in it. Dennis Hopper's in it. Um, and uh, Bruce Springsteen, it is based on some, like some of his music, which is cool. So cool stuff. And there is interviews. I don't know if they're new interviews or old interviews, but there is interviews with Sean Penn, uh, Viggo Mortensen, and David Morse. So I look forward to not only watching the movie again, um, but I also look forward to those interviews. So we will see what happens. But 
yeah, again, um, I have not seen this in a long time. But Charles Bronson, the small time that he's in the movie, I like. And this was this was towards the end of his career, so he was really slowing down in terms of movies and in life, unfortunately. But um, always thought this was interesting. I, I would uh, hopefully on the features they they talk about him. Um, I would be curious to to hear you know any stories that they might have had of, of working with him. But we'll see. You know, we will see. But Good little underrated movie that nobody ever talks about. So there's that. All right. And last but certainly not least, I did get, uh, well, I only bought two, but I did get um, a bunch more, which I will explain um, in, a, in a minute here. But I did get some records. Uh, first up, might as well just show this in order. I did get a couple more uh, Walmart exclusive vinyl. Um, I know in the last video, I was trying to figure out how many I actually got. I only got two albums, um, which was Santana Supernatural and Bon Jovi Crossroad. And then I got the two uh, Star Wars singles. I don't know why I thought I got a third one, but I looked back and stuff and, and reviewed footage and all that. I only got I only got two albums and then the two singles. Um, but I did get two more albums this time. These were the two that I actually wanted. And of course the Aerosmith one I got in the mail. But first up, I got the soundtrack to Top Gun, and this is on red vinyl, which is very cool. Now, this is the original release uh, track listing um, they did do on CD only. Um, they did release a extended or expanded edition, rather, with just a lyric sheet in here, and this is what the vinyl looks like, just regular red vinyl, but very cool. Um, but they did release a expanded version of the soundtrack only on CD, but all the songs that were on there, um, it had, um, Great Balls of Fire was on there. It had the instrumental piece after Goose dies, that acoustic piece. Um, it had the 12 inch remix of playing with the boys and it, that it also had, um, you've lost the love and feeling. Um, but all those songs are on vinyl, so that's not a big deal. But again, this is the original uh, 1986 track listing with the you know the multi platinum selling Top Gun soundtrack back in the day. Um, this is a reissue of that, but it's on red vinyl. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I do love the soundtrack. I do love the movie. Top Gun is a great film, and the soundtrack is pretty badass, at least in my opinion. And i um, looking forward to listening to this. So it should be very cool. And then the other one that I got, um, I don't think it was the last update. It was the one before. I got this album, but again, Walmart exclusive. They reissued it on a, a clear vinyl, actually. And it is Santana's Greatest Hits. Now, again, track listing is exactly the same. Um, the only difference is this was pressed on clear vinyl and they did add I know I talked about this they did add like a milky look to it I mean kind of I mean it's pretty much straight clear you know but you can you can tell not really up to the light but if you look at it you could see a little milk like milky in it um but still cool you know still pretty cool and that's it of the the recent Walmart exclusive vinyls um those are really all the ones I wanted to get uh, they did release a bunch more, but it's either, it's mostly stuff that I don't want. It's just <clears throat> mostly albums that I don't care about. Like Fleetwood Mac, I think Dreams is the name of the album. I don't give a fuck about Fleetwood Mac, so obviously I don't want that one. But um, there is, you know, there is a, a bunch more out there if, if people are interested. But I got the the five albums that I wanted and then the two Star Wars singles and again I wish they would have did one for Return of the Jedi because they did uh, Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back they could have did one for Return of the Jedi they could have did the Ewok song and the you know the battle theme or something like they could have definitely did one for Jedi I don't know why fucking laziness but oh well okay so now 
the rest of the albums, and there is a bunch here, these I inherited. Um, I know, I, I believe I, I, I did mention this before. Um, back in the fall, when I was at school, my uncle had actually, one of my uncles had actually passed away. Um, and I know I keep talking about this, and he was actually a DJ way back when, and record collector and all of that. Um, year, uh, years ago, several years ago now, he did give me, uh, some records and, you know, um, these were, my dad went down and, and took care of some stuff and he actually ended up grabbing a number of them, which was cool. Um, so I guess in a way I inherited these, but, uh, yeah, you know, he, again, he passed away when I was out at school, um, and, it is what it is, you know, unfortunately. But um, I did get some of his stuff to carry on, which is cool. Now, the only issue is like half of these, well, probably, yeah, probably more than, yeah, more than half of these are ones I already had. Now, again, I did not grab these. My dad did. You know, I appreciate it. I really do. And I don't mind. I actually don't mind because these are all good albums and stuff. So I don't mind having another copy. And plus, they are kind of more sentimental because they belong to my uncle. So, you know, I don't mind having these. You know, I definitely don't mind. So these are all, again, ones that I already have in my collection. Um, so first up, we've got Prince, uh, When Doves Cry. Now, I don't have this particular release. I do have the 12-inch uh, maxi single of When Doves Cry. This is actually the uh, the promotional 12-inch single. So again, this was one that was sent out to DJs like my uncle, and you know back in the day, and also radio stations and such. But I do really like the cover, keeping in with the Purple Rain theme, um, and this one just has the album version of When Doves Cry, and then the single edit, which is still pretty cool. So again. Um, I do have a version of this, but I don't have this particular version, which is, is not bad in my opinion. It's still cool. And I know I said earlier, uh, we, um, used to, when I was, when me and my brother were younger, we spent a lot of time with my uncle and we would always go to Blockbuster to rent movies and search for one Eye Jimmy was one of the many films that we watched together over the years so that was a little a little antidote back to that i got a little ahead of myself um, next up a uh, great album by the way uh, all these are great uh, but aerosmith get your wings have another copy of this um, and my uncle did actually write his name on it which is pretty cool so it's again a little more uh, sentimental but yeah you know great album uh, underrated aerosmith album you really don't i mean this one had some pretty big songs. I mean, Same Old Song and Dance was big. Uh, that was the biggest hit. But Lord of the Thighs, they used to play a lot back in the 70s. Um, SOS Too Bad, they played. Train Kept Rollin' is on here. Seasons of Wither, fantastic song. Uh, Pandora's Box is good. And the other one, Space and Woman of the World, nobody ever talks about those. And they're actually pretty damn good Aerosmith songs, in my opinion. Um but good stuff on here. I love love this album. I love early Aerosmith, but that one in particular. Um, next up, another great album that certainly needs no introduction. Paranoid by Black Sabbath. Again, I just have another copy of this one. Um, this one, again, is labeled in a couple places, which is cool. But, you know, a, an album like this, I definitely don't mind. You know, again, all of these, I don't mind having another copy. Um, next up, got the first two Van Halen albums. So here is Van Halen uh, Numero Uno. Very cool. Great album. And then we've got Van Halen Numero Doso. <laughs> Van Halen 2, obviously. But another great album. And then um, a few Led Zeppelin albums here. First up, Led Zeppelin 3 classic um when it came out it was not very well received but over time people have uh warmed up to it but i have always loved zeppelin 3 it's always been a classic and this is actually 
a UK pressing. The pressing that I have, the other one, is an American pressing, so it, that's okay. You know, it's a different pressing, and of course it has the kaleidoscope cover, which the original vinyl had, um, which is very cool. Kaleidoscope? Not a kaleidoscope. The spinning wheel shit, whatever the fuck that's called, but this is the cover for it. And then, of course, Led Zeppelin 4, which, growing up, the, in when I first started getting into Zeppelin, way 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago now, when I was a little, little kid, um, this was my favorite Zeppelin album for a long time. Um, but still one of my favorites, but not my absolute favorite. This one is my absolute favorite, and it is Houses of the Holy. Um, this cover, this video will probably get taken down because remember the controversy with the cover last year, but it's art, it's fucking. This is one of the most famous covers in music history, and it's art, it's nothing negative. So fuck off, you fucking whiny ass pussy bitches. Sorry, but. This is my favorite Zeppelin album, so again, definitely don't mind having another copy. And the last Zeppelin album is Physical Graffiti. Another great one. A lot of great stuff on here. And again, it does have the original uh, cover with the windows that move. Um, some of the reissues did not have that. Um, but yeah, uh, this, this album is a collection of... Some stuff that hadn't come out yet and, and other stuff. But still, I mean, this is prime Led Zeppelin. You know, can't go wrong. Uh, next up, yet another classic album. Uh, Tears for Fears, Songs from the Big Chair. Uh, this one is actually a promo copy, which is very, very cool. And it also has the original hype sticker. So, yeah, that is actually pretty, pretty damn cool in my opinion. <clears throat> Excuse me, a little... These are a little, you know, dirty and dusty, so that's all coming up now. But, um, but yeah, awesome stuff. And the last one that I already have, uh, this is a comedy album, but it's uh, Father Guido Sarducci live at St. Douglas uh, Covenant. Uh, Guido Sarducci, uh, Don, oh God, what's his name? I can never remember his name, man. Like, his, his, his real name. Um, is it Don Pardo? I gotta look it up now because it's Don Novello. Okay, I, no Don Pardo is the the voice of Saturday Night Live. Right, sorry, that guy he passed away. Um, Don Novello, my bad. But yeah, Guido Sarducci was the the most famous character that he did, of course, uh, from Saturday Night Live. Amongst other things, he had a cameo in Casper. And yeah, but I already have this, but this one still has the shrink wrap and, and it's in really good shape. So again, I'm, I'm not going to get like my records. I'll never get rid of, I'll, you know, never, that'll never happen. So I don't mind having, you know, especially again, these are more sentimental. I don't mind having a couple extra copies. I can deal with it. Now the rest of these are all ones that I did not have. Um, these are just ones that my dad grabbed and, uh, yeah, so first up, this one is an Italian uh, rock band. Um, I, re I do, because my dad said that he grabbed it because, for me, because my uncle like really liked this band and really followed him. And I do remember, now that I'm like thinking about it, I do remember growing up, like my uncle had like cassettes of these guys and, and all kinds of stuff. Now that I'm thinking about it. But they're called Pooh, like Pooh Bear. Um, and this is uh, Ultima Notte Insami. I have no idea what that means in English. Um, but this is a five record set. I mean, pretty pretty nice box set and stuff. And um, I looked them up again. They're like an Italian uh, pop rock band. So I'm sure something like Cheap Trick or, or whatever. Um but I'm really looking forward to listening to this, to be honest. I, I'm, I'm sure that once I start listening to this, I will recognize some of the songs because he would play all kinds of Italian music growing up. So I actually really look forward to that one. Um, so next up, 
uh, got a few uh, Greta Van Fleet, actually. Um, one of them I already have, but the one I have is the, <clears throat> excuse me, the yellow reissue. So this one's actually the original. So first up, um, this is their very first release. This is a EP. Uh, this one is called Black Smoke Rising, which has uh, four songs on it. So this is their very first release. Uh, all these are on black vinyl. Um, all these have been reissued in different colors and stuff. Maybe I will grab those at some point. But for now, to to check these guys out and to get more into them, uh, it's, this is cool. You know, this is pretty cool to me. So, yeah, again, this is, uh, again, Black Smoke Rising, their first EP. And then this one is uh, all the songs from the EP are on here. And then there is a couple more that they threw on here. So I guess this is also an EP. I'm not really sure how the, to classify this one because um, there is eight songs on here. Um, and this one is from The Fires. Again, I already have this one, but I do have the FYE exclusive yellow vinyl uh, this one is on uh, just good old regular black vinyl and then this one is actually their full-length album and this one is called anthem of the peaceful army uh, really cool artwork um, on there so really cool stuff really looking forward again i've heard a lot of good things about these guys i know a lot of people oh they ripped off led zeppelin you know what every fucking band that came out after led zeppelin ripped off led zeppelin so shut up um it's called rock and roll it's how it works but again really been wanting to get into these guys and i now have all their stuff so very very cool i was actually i was at a record store uh recently and the guy had this one but he wanted like 40 bucks for it so i'm glad that i held off because I got it for free, so I can't complain. Um, so a few more here. Um, most of these, actually all, yeah, all but this one are singles. So I'll just add no to correction. Um, yep, all, all but the next two are, are singles. So first up, come on, you bitch. <laughs> Behave. <laughs> so first up, I got... Revolver from the Beatles. I did not have this one. Uh, great stuff on here. Uh, Taxman, Eleanor Rigby, uh, Yellow, Sub <clears throat> Yellow Submarines on here. Uh, she said, she said, great song. Good Day Sunshine. I Want to Tell You, which uh, Ted Nugent actually covered. I just got that recently. And uh, Tomorrow Never Knows. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Revolver is the first Beatles album to have the same track listing in both the UK and America. Because I think all of them before this had different track listings. Um, the UK ones would always have more songs, I believe. But I think Revolver is the first one where it's all kosher. So there you go. And then uh, the last actual album that I got is Love It to Death from Alice Cooper. Which has, I'm 18 as you can tell by the... It's on the actual jacket of the album. But also on here, uh, Ballad of Dwight Fry, great song. Um, is It My Body, the title track, or not the title track, Jesus. Um, is It My Body is on here, so good stuff. And this is, again, when Alice Cooper was still a band, not a person. So there you go. And again, like I said, the, the remainder of these is all singles. So first up. Uh, not one, but two copies of Rock the Casbah by The Clash. So the A side, of course, is Rock the Casbah. Fantastic song. And then the B side is Mustafa Dance. But there is two of them in here. Um, why two? I don't know, but I have two of them. So there you go. And then next up, uh, we got The Cure with Close to Me. This is the remix. So, very cool. I do like The Cure. They got some really good stuff. Um, and the B-side to this is Just Like Heaven, the Dizzy Mix, and the Red Mix of Primary. So, we'll see uh, what that's all about. And then this this band I never heard of. My dad said, um, you know, check these guys out. Actually, I lied. There's one more album. Uh, sorry about that, folks, but... Uh, my dad grabbed this. He said it would be pretty cool. This is uh, Yazoo with Situation. 
Um, and there's also, uh, like the Clash one, there's two. For some reason, there's two copies in here. Um, one is the regular single. The other is the DJ promo. So same thing, just a, a different label on there. But whatever this is, and it's, I looked it up. It's like electronic rock. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. And the last single that I got is... Uh, T-Rex Archive 4. Uh, this one has Ride a White Swan, Jeepster, Hot Love, and Get It On. Uh, love T-Rex. Great stuff. Um, so there's that one. Again, it's kind of a quadruple single, I guess. Um, and again, I forgot about this one, but this is another album. It is uh, 10 Years After with Cricklewood Green. Um, I'm familiar with 10 Years After. Uh, not too too much but i am trying to get more into them uh they're 70s blues rock so i like that kind of stuff so we'll uh we'll see what what happens with this one so that's it um i know this is pretty lengthy but yeah so i hope that you guys enjoyed this collection update and um i'm kind of out of breath from doing that and the previous video so until the next time as always thank you guys for watching take care I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.